I think one of the messages that came across most clearly um, for me from the context from, you know, our, from the very beginning of the, the opening ceremonies and, and the demonstrations there to um, the words of uh, Monique and the words of Deborah particularly in the opening ceremony and so much of what we've heard since um, the, the presentation this morning from the senator from the Philippines is the importance of resistance in what we do in this current political climate. And I want to leave my part of the, uh, my part of the agenda just by repeating the words of Senator Hontiveros uh, in her video this morning for those of you who didn't see it when she was talking about the war on drugs in the Philippines and the importance of harm reduction. The senator said, harm reduction is our offer to despots who play God. It's our weapon to end this war, and it's our hope to save lives. And I think that's a message that we can take back wherever we go, um, in some harsh climates and some maybe friendlier climates, but that resistance still has to continue, and I look forward to working with everyone on that. Now, one of the things I'm really proud of in this conference is the work and the support that I've received from our colleague Trevor, uh, and also Ken Clement at the Canadian Aboriginal AIDS Network. Um, one of my mentors when I worked in harm reduction here was a woman named Laverne Manette, who was the director of the Ontario Aboriginal AIDS Strategy. Laverne passed uh, just a small number of years ago. And when I was put in touch with Trevor as kind of my link person uh, to help organize some of the Aboriginal and Indigenous content in the conference, it turns out that she was also Trevor's mentor. So we've had this sort of special bond and I've been Part of organizing this conference has been, in my own mind, wanting to honor my memories of Laverne and all the gifts she gave to me. Um, and so I'd like to leave that message and I'd like to invite Sedalia back to the stage, recognizing that we've enjoyed this wonderful week on unceded Mohawk territory. And I'd like very much to invite Sedalia back to bid us all farewell. Thank you. Kwe Hanagati at Gahiwam said to one hotu, Kikotsilum we quachat at Garoro. So I say hello to everyone. And um, the time has come for us to close this gathering. And it's funny because Trevor and I were talking, and I said, you know, when I'm asked to do these openings or I'm asked to speak at different events, I'll walk in and they'll say, oh, do you need a podium to put your notes on? And I say, notes? What notes? Because I never write anything down. But this week, there was so much, so much to retain and so much I didn't want to forget. So I wrote notes. <laughs> I opened the conference by saying harm reduction. That's something that we as Aboriginal people, as indigenous people of these lands have been doing since the beginning of time. It's something that we were taught in our original instructions. And I told you about those original instructions when I opened the conference. And I also told you that everything on Mother Earth is doing exactly what they were told at the beginning of time when they were given those original instructions. Everything on Mother Earth, everything in Sky World is doing exactly what they were told to do except the human beings. And our jobs were the easiest. Love one another, take care and honor one another, regardless of race, color, creed, religion. And give thanks every day. Give thanks. Don't be praying to God for things that you want. Give thanks each and every day to everything that you have, everything that Creator has given you, all those things on Mother Earth that are doing the jobs that they were told to do. Give thanks to those trees, 
that grow and help you to breathe. Give thanks for those beautiful birds that fly and sing those songs. Give thanks for those flowers that grow on Mother Earth. Because think about what, what Mother Earth and what Sky World would be like if all those things decided tomorrow we don't need to do our jobs anymore. No more flowers will grow. The birds will stop singing. Our brother, the sun, will stop coming out. Wouldn't our world be beautiful? Mm-hmm. And do we have the time to stop and say thank you? I do, every day. I did the opening for the Global Fund last year. And um, when I did that opening, I brought water from North Dakota. I brought water from a river they were killing. After, the day after the Global Fund conference, myself and a group of other natives went to the St. Lawrence Rapids and we prayed. We added that water to the St. Lawrence Rapids and we prayed to those rapids and said, give the Missouri River all the strength that you have because these crazy people in the United States are trying to kill that river. Well, they did it. Their pipeline went through and last week, their pipeline burst. So, give thanks. Care for one another. You know, I was so upset the first day of this conference. I opened it, and then the ministers all got up. The only thing on their mind was to invite everybody, invite everyone to go and celebrate the 375th anniversary of Montreal. Excuse me, Montreal is a lot older than 375 years old. Why would I go and celebrate them stealing my land. Why would I go and celebrate them stealing our children, putting them in residential schools? And those residential schools closed in 1996. Not 200 years ago, not 50 years ago, in 1996 was the last indigenous re residential school. Why would I celebrate the 60s scoop and all those babies that were stolen? I work with those children now, those children who were so lost because they were, they were raised by non-Indigenous families, had no idea who and what they were. So my heart was broken when I heard those, those ministers up here then, when the Minister of Health came up and you guys got up and turned your backs, I have to say I was damn proud of you. I know I, I, know I had people coming to me and saying, oh, I don't know, was that right? Should they have done that? I said, damn right they should have. They have people dying in the streets and nobody cares. Nobody is listening. It's time they start, yeah, do it, turn your backs. Yeah, she wanted to cry. Well, I'll tell you, I made her cry outside. I didn't realize she was standing behind me and I was speaking to someone and I was talking about what, hap what, was, what was going on. And I said, you know, 
I said, she's got a lot of good words. And so did Harper. So did Harper. He gave us his apologies and he felt so bad for the residential schools and he felt so bad for the 60s scoop. And three months later, three months later, he took away the Aboriginal Healing Fund. What communities do you think were harmed with that? HIV AIDS, no more funding. Residential school survivors, no more funding. Children of the 60s scoop, no more funding. According to Harper's government, the indigenous people of these lands miraculously healed. We're all better. We don't need to heal anymore. We have to scrape and beg to get a few dollars together just to have a sweat lodge, just to have our healing circles. We don't have the sweat lodges and the healing circles of the people who decided, I went to a sweat lodge and I went to a healing circle and I know how it works. So let me have a healing circle and charge everybody $50 a person to come. No. Our healing circles, our sweat lodges, you pay nothing. You come, you heal, you work. You pay nothing. But because of the Aboriginal Healing Fund being gone, we have to scrimp and save. So yeah, she had beautiful words. Words, are, words mean nothing. So I'm damn proud of you people who turned your back on her. And with that, oh God, there's so much. There's more, but I'm tired. You're tired. <laughs> when I opened, I opened the prayer in my language. I'm going to close in yours so you'll understand what I said. So at this time, I ask you to bring your minds together so our minds become one. And I ask you to turn your minds over to the human beings that walk this earth that still have respect for Mother Earth. So be it in your minds. I ask you to turn your minds over to Mother Earth and thank her for everything that she gives you each and every day. So be it in your minds. I ask you to turn your minds over to the waters that flow on Mother Earth. Thank them and honor them, so be it in your minds. I ask you to turn your minds over to the fish, those water beings that, that swim in our lakes, streams, and oceans, and thank them and honor them, so be it in your minds. I ask you to turn your minds over to those green beings that grow on Mother Earth, those grasses, those herbs, those medicines, thank them and honor them, so be it in your minds. I ask you to turn your minds over to those flower beings, those beautiful flowers that grow on Mother Earth, thank them and honor them, so be it in your minds. I ask you to turn your mind over to that vegetation, those vegetables that grow on Mother Earth that keep us nourished, thank them and honor them, so be it in our minds. I ask you to turn your minds over to those fruit beings, those fruits that grow, those berries that grow on Mother Earth. Thank them and honor them. So be it in our minds. I ask you to turn your minds over to those insect beings, those insects that crawl in Mother Earth. Thank them and honor them, because if we didn't have them, our Earth would be solid cement. Thank those beings so we can plant, so be it in our minds. I ask you to turn your minds over to those tree beings, those tree beings that grow on Mother Earth, provide us with the oxygen we need to breathe, so be it in your minds. I ask you to turn your minds over to those four-legged beings, those four-legged beings that walk Mother Earth, that provide us with food, with clothing, so thank them and honor them, so be it in our minds. 
I ask you to turn your minds over to those winged beings, those beautiful birds that fly above our heads and sing us those beautiful songs. We thank them and we honor them. So be it in our minds. I ask you to turn your mind over to those four winds, those four winds that bring us our four seasons. We thank them and we honor them. So be it in your minds. I ask you to turn your minds over to those thunder beings, our grandfathers, the thunders that bring the rains that fill our lakes, rivers, streams, and oceans. We thank them and we honor them. So be it in your minds. I ask you to turn your minds over to our brother, the sun, and thank him and honor him for coming out each and every day. I ask you to turn your minds over to those star beings, those stars that come out at night and shine and guide us. We thank them and we honor them. So be it in our minds. I ask you to turn your minds over to our grandmother, the moon. Thank her and honor her for guiding all the females of this earth through their life. So be it in our minds. This, now I ask you to turn your minds back over to that creator and thank him and honor him for everything that he has left you here on earth to sustain you, to keep you alive. This is as far as I can go in this prayer. If there's anything on Mother Earth or in Sky World that I have forgotten, I leave it to you to fix in your minds. Nyawal, thank you. Before I go, I think we all need a little bit of healing. And in our culture, the animal that helps us to heal is the bear. The bear is our medicine. <clears throat> I always tell the people who are in my sweat lodge, our last round is the bear round. And I pass the berries around and I tell them, you need to eat these berries, you need to feed your bear, because that bear is the one who's going to help you heal. If ever you're in the bush and you get lost, you'll never go hungry. You'll never die of thirst. You'll always find shelter if you follow bear tracks. He will guide you to all the berries you can eat. He will guide you to all the roots you can eat. He'll even dig them up for you. He'll guide you to the water. And he'll guide you to the caves. Just don't follow him. Just follow his tracks. So before I go, I'll just give you a little bit of that bear healing. I'm 
Thank you. And I hope you all return home safely. Follow that bear track. He'll guide you home. Yeah, well.